this government has, decide, has decided that the real priority is to back working people around the country. That is something I am extremely proud of. But now we really need people back at work, the economy growing so that those jobs can be protect, genuinely protected and sustainable in the medium and the long term. Because this isn't just a, a matter of uh, sandwich uh, shops and coffee bars that lose out when large, uh, large numbers of workers are away from the office and the factory for so long. We live, in, uh, we live and work in an uh, interconnected economy. All parts of it rely on other uh, sectors. One of the main factors that is uh, limiting order books for manufacturers and other businesses in my constituency is the, uh, is the fact that um, so, so much of the economy is performing below uh, normal capacity, that the impact that that has on uh, supply chains. The longer that many jobs are furloughed, the less likely those jobs are to be there and to be sustainable whenever a, a, a furlough scheme ends. And that's why it's not appropriate to have an indefinite extension uh, to the furlough scheme. I shall briefly. Members, very courteous, Mr Deputy Speaker. Um, and I also pay tribute to the furlough scheme. It has been very helpful to business my constituency. My point is this. Other members have mentioned this already. I am the chair of the APPG Excluded UK. I wonder if the Honourable Member would agree that this APPG would not have happened had it not been for support on his own benches, and it would be helpful if we could have a meeting with uh, ministers from the Treasury to discuss in a, in a constructive way how we might be able to help the people who have been missed out. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I obviously won't answer on behalf of ministers as to the availability for, uh, for meetings, but I think for, for those who fell outside of these uh, extensive schemes, I think they need more than anybody else for the economy to be moving back towards a state approaching normalcy, because that is where uh, their sustainable income uh, comes from. And so the quicker we can do that, the better it is for them. Of course, there, whilst it would not be appropriate to have the indefinite extension to furlough scheme, I don't think furlough is even a medium-term solution. There are some parts uh, of the economy where there are particular needs for support, and I think the, uh, the measures that have been announced by my right honourable friend, the Chief Secretary, early this afternoon, both for businesses that are told to shut and for individuals who are obviously uh, made to self-isolate, is extremely welcome. I do hope that, uh, that ministers will look at what, uh, what measures other than uh, other than furlough might be appropriate for those businesses where uh, legislative requirements mean either they can't operate or they can't operate economically. Obviously, we've heard about theatres and live <laughs> events, uh, the like, or where ongoing uh, regulations mean the demand has quite simply been taken away, uh, perhaps in some parts of the uh, tourism and uh, travel sector where quarantine measures mean that actually their customer base is not there at all. Businesses across the economy would not have survived the last six months without the innovative uh, support that has been put in place by the Chancellor. I thoroughly welcome it, but now we need to build the economy uh, for a sustainable future. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I think most of us are agreed that we are facing a triple whammy at the moment of a public health crisis in the, in the guise of COVID,